Bonjour, je vais Bonjour, Donc, bonjour, Jocelyne Julien, membre du comité directeur. Nous sommes très heureux d'être ici aujourd'hui pour vous aider avec votre entreprise. Vous avez grandement grandi dans les dernières années et maintenant vous faites face à de nou nouveaux projets. C'est pourquoi mon équipe de Bilodo et Associés sont ici aujourd'hui pour vous faire une présentation. Donc, premièrement, ici, Juliana Aubal, Christina Contaxis et moi-même, Marie-Hélène Mercier-Goulet. Donc, aujourd'hui, nous, nous allons vous parler de vos deux nouveaux projets. Ensuite, nous allons vous parler des, des méthodes de comptabilité que vous pourriez utiliser pour euh, différentes choses et vous expliquer laquelle que nous avons choisi pour vous. Et finalement, nous allons vous présenter les aides financières que nous avons refaites pour l'année euh, 2013 et euh, conclure rapidement. Je vais maintenant euh, continuer la présentation en anglais. Par contre, vous pouvez poser des questions en anglais ou en français euh, pendant la période de, de questions. So, at the end of our presentation, you will know that you should invest in skinless sausages and that this could bring you uh, an NPV of $8 million. You should also increase product variety by expanding, expanding to meat low at the same time as going with the, the first project, which is skinless sausages. And finally, you should make the appropriate adjustments to your accounting reports. So you have asked for our analysis on the skinless sausages project. But before we get into the cash flows, I'm going to walk you through some of the numbers so you understand where they're coming from. So first off is the revenue for the skinless sausages. Total revenue is calculated as a percentage of the total volume of sales from last year, which uh, comes out to 480,000 kilograms, roughly, and revenue grows 10% each year from year two to year five. In terms of direct labor, uh, for skinless sausages, it's 15% of the total direct labor, so that comes out to a, about $112,000. We're also going to take a look at whether you should capitalize or expense some of the uh, numbers. So training for the new machine should be capitalized. We've allocated $10,000 of this to be capitalized and the remaining $5,000 to be expensed as we think that this is a routine training. In addition, advertising costs should be fully, fully expensed. So now taking a look at our cash flow schedule. We see that revenue grows 10% over the five uh, by 10% over the five years. There, you are expensing, you are capitalizing advertising, uh, fifteen thousand. Uh, you're capitalizing ten thousand dollars of advertising expenses, uh, and the five thousand dollars that you expense for a total of fifteen thousand dollars. There's an additional fifteen thousand dollars in training that is a cash outflow. 
The full equipment amount of $6 million will be cash outflow in the first year as well. And there's also tax savings of $150,000 in the first year and $300,000 uh, from the second year onwards. So discounted back at a rate of 8% based on the non-convertible loan interest rate, you get an NPV of almost $8 million. And the direct materials amounts come from the total cost of the ingredients. I will now pass it on to Juliana. Thank you. So we've taken a look at the cash flows that we expect to see in the next five years, and this shows a positive MPV, which means that the project is feasible. Um, now, in terms of financing this project, we've taken a look at the cash flows from operations uh, using the indirect method and trying to back it out from the current year's earnings. So cash flows from operations, which you'll see at the end of our presentation in the cash flow statement, um, came out to 171000 and free cash flows, which is the cash flows from operations less depreciation costs, um, were actually negative. So based on simple cash flows from operations, this isn't enough to finance the project that we think is feasible and should be pursued. So our second option would be to finance the growth through taking on another loan. Now, taking into account that the loan we already have, um, sorry, the convertible loan requires an interest coverage ratio of 2.5 to 1. We've uh, taken the liberty to calculate what the interest coverage ratio would have been this year had we had an additional $6 million loan to finance the purchase of equipment. And the coverage ratio does jump from 0.28 to 1.75, so it increases a significant amount, but there is still enough wiggle room to be able to meet that 2.5 to 1 ratio. Um, so more qualitative information about taking on this project. Um, the high return rate that we've seen from the current products that you're selling may in be indicative of lower quality. So we see that customers in your reviews have said that there is a high quality of product, but unfortunately um, the major supply contract that you just made is indicating otherwise through high returns. So we find that it might be important to reevaluate and make sure that the quality of our current products <coughs> is there before taking on new uh, projects. Pursuing this project, however, will have serious benefits in increasing customer satisfaction by increasing the variety of our product lines. So this was one area that we saw possible for improvement through the customer um, questionnaires. Tax benefits could also result from financing the project through debt. So through interest payments, we would have reduced tax liabilities. And research market feasibility would probably <coughs> be a good idea before pursuing um, a new project like this, just to make sure that there is a solid market and that there would be positive demand. So in terms of continuing on with the meatloaf project, because we do think that skinless sausages is a feasible project and that it will be profitable, it only makes sense to continue this with the meatloaf project because there are opportunities to have joint production. So we've predicted the cash flows for the next five years with revenues again being based on volume sales of 10% as was provided to us and cost of direct materials being from the ingredients and labor as calculated. Um, and we assumed for conservatism, no growth rate over the five years, so a consistent 10% of volume sales. So further information about the meatloaf project. Um, this would further increase your product variety, which is positive for customers who saw that there wasn't enough variety yet, so we see this as a further opportunity to grow. Um, there is also an opportunity for large margins with the meatloaf in that it charges a higher price of 450 as a sales price, where the direct materials are much lower at, I believe, 31 cents. So we see this as a great opportunity to increase margins from sales of meatloaf versus even the skinless sausages. Um, customer meat baskets are also trending towards meatloaf, so this is a positive sign in terms of demand. And we want to leverage the existing support that we have from major food suppliers. And I'll now pass it on to Mary Ellen. So I will continue on with the accounting methods. First of all, we wanted to make sure we are all up to date with the criteria for capitalization. So first of all, it needs to increase the useful life on a, of an asset. It does not mean that it, it, need, it needs not be to be a, a repair and maintenance, and it needs to prepare the asset for use. So going on with the interest, can we capitalize it or not? This is a question that Jocelyn had for us. So we can only capitalize the interest that was accrued during the construction period, not after nor before, uh, for which the loan was outstanding. So we accrued uh, the interest for the construction of the building. 
Then for transportation and installation, this is something that you can capitalize. You first expense it, but this is something that you can capitalize as it meets the criteria I just stated. So you would, in the financial statements we provided, you would increase building since you capitalize it, and you would decrease administrative expenses for, uh, for 35,000. For the legal fees, uh, we looked at whether we could capitalize it or not. It does not meet uh, the criteria. And we also looked at the criteria of assets, which are to provide future economic benefits, to be measured reliably, and to, uh, to have the rights to use or the ownership of the asset. Legal fees does not meet those criteria, so th this should be expensed. This cannot be on the balance sheet. So we would increase legal fees expense for 200,000 and we would decrease the fair charge for 200,000 also. Then for the convertible debt, it can be recorded as equity or as liability. It depends on uh, the probability that the debt will be converted. As of now, since the, the ratio is all right, this should be recorded as a liability. But if there was a high risk that it would be converted to uh, the common shares, this should be recorded as equity on the financial statements. Uh, so once again, this is only to put emphasis on the, on the fact that it's a liability since uh, the, there is a principle to be repaired also and fixed interest payments assuming that the debt, debt is not converted. Also, uh, concerning the convertible debt, there is conversion rights that needs to be added to the balance sheet in the equity section. So the conversion rights is the difference between the amount that, you, uh, that the bondholder has paid and the uh, amount that he would have paid if there, uh, the, the bond wasn't convertible. So we calculated it and the value is uh, a little bit more than 300,000. So uh, for the, the conversion rights, they can be amortized over five years or uh, over the life of the bond, whichever is uh, shorter. So we took the five years amortization. So now let's take a look at uh, your sales return. So there's not that much informa uh, information provided about the current policies for sales returns. Um, however, we know that it's about a 10 day period so there are two methods to account for this. First, you could defer revenue for until the end of the 10-day period, or second, you could create an allowance account for returns. We would recommend that you defer the revenue recognition <coughs> until the end of the 10-day period, because um, yeah, because we don't want your revenues to be overstated before um, before all the returns have been set in. So due to the high return rate that you do have, we. Uh, do not recommend that. We do recommend that you defer until the end of the 10-day period, largely due to the revenue recognition criteria that has not been met, uh, which is that it is not measured reliably until the end of 10 days. Your sales are not measured reliably until the end of 10 days. Your high returns may also indicate poor quality products. So the customer reviews that we got back from our, your questionnaire did not. Uh, the customers did not feel that there was poor quality. However, the products did not pass the quality control tests of uh, Ali Plus. So this should also be addressed before moving forward with the new projects. Okay, so now we'd like to present to you our adjusted balance sheets based on the financial statements that you've provided for us. So we've only included the 2013 unaudited statements, our adjustments in the center, and then our final um, numbers on the far left side. <coughs> so as you can see, the deferred asset has been removed. Um, Building has been increased to include the capitalization of interest during the construction period. Um, we've re removed, or sorry, we've added the 35,000 of transportation costs to production equipment, and the total effects have been included at the bottom for changes in assets. And next, we've got the liabilities and equity section. So liabilities has remained largely consistent although equity has been increased to include the conversion rights, as we discussed before. Um, and if the bond were to be converted, then the conversion rights would be included in a contributed surplus. And finally, we have our income statement. 
So again, the adjustments that are present here are also seen largely on the balance sheet. So uh, a decrease in interest on the loan due to the fact that part of the interest was capitalized. Um, the decrease in administrative overhead expense that was also capitalized as part of our equipment purchase. And fixed asset depreciation was also adjusted. And the legal fees has been added as an expense as it was removed from the balance sheet previously. So overall, our net income has actually jumped from what was previously seen as 129,000 in income has become a $27,000 loss. And finally, we have the cash flow statement. And this is just the uh, cash flow from operations portion, which was discussed earlier in our presentation. So we've started with the net income that we've calculated as a loss of 27,000, removed any of the non-cash transactions and adjusted for changes in working capital and come up with a cash flow from operations and free cash flows as discussed before. So three key takeaways from our presentation that we'd like you to leave with is that your company should invest in skinless sausages to receive an NPV of $8 million. And as an extension of this, because of the joint production and because of high possible margins from selling meatloaf, you should also expand your product um, variety by selling meatloaf as well. Finally, as we've discussed at the end of our presentation, is to make the following appropriate adjustments to your accounting statements. Merci beaucoup pour votre attention et nous, nous sommes ouverts pour les questions. First of all, uh, you calculate the the net value of the product. <coughs> uh, how you abort? Uh, well, but the normal capacity of the of the plane uh, we have in the company, uh, we are limited with some employees and some uh, equipment. Uh, how we consider the new project and the normal capacity in your analysis of the rentability of the project? Um, well, we did calculate the volume sales based on sales that had been experienced by the company in the past, or the weekly sales that had been experienced over the past few months. So we saw that if this capacity could be met, then it was reasonable to see that these, this level of sales could be maintained in the future. But if you make sales of the new product, you can't make sales of the old product. You have a gain, but you have a loss. I see. Um, I believe that was already taken into account in the information provided. You've already uh, come up with uh, expectations of what next year's figures could be. So you've allocated 75% of next year's sales to be from our older products, and our new sales will, come, uh, will fill up the rest of the 25%. It's a technical point. You, you um, calculate the, the, the value of the option, of conversion option, mm -hmm. 381. Yes. Yeah. I wonder what's the debit part of the transaction? Pardon me? There's a credit. Credit, uh, and what's, what, what is the debit? It would have been a debit to cash when we issued the loan. So when we issued the loan, we would have received cash, and then the Credit would have been to the bond payable and as well to But now you put uh, you could you you adjust the financial statement. You can take the your your adjustment. You adjust the financial statement of three hundred and eighty one dollars as a credit. And where's the debit part of, the, of this transaction? Uh, would have been a reduction in the bond value. Justement, vous avez fait au résultat, euh, en fait, il découle une perte. Ça m'intrigue un peu parce qu'on a un ratio respecté. Euh, en fait, là, qui est vu sur le PI. Euh, ça m'intrigue un peu parce que le, le ratio est encore respecté après l'ajustement. Euh, Est-ce que vous avez une question? because of the tax expense that would be reduced 
be guests from, for, from our tax team, but this is why we have a loss. Before the tax expense, it's, it's a good number. Yeah. As well, the depreciation makes a big impact. Also, you ask we have to uh, recognize product at the moment after the 10 days. But if you don't make any adjustment for this conclusion? Uh, we didn't make an adjustment because uh, it wasn't clear from the information provided whether this was your policy right now or not. So <coughs> if this is your policy right now, there is no adjustment to make. But if it, this is not your policy, then the adjustment should be because made. Because if I admit, the, the sales for the Joe, the month of June, is uh, 450000 mm -hmm. Uh, if I put an important amount in front in uh, July, maybe I increase my loss and I don't can respect my rescue. Yeah, they may have an important impact of, yes. of my accounting. Yeah. And you, you think the good way to do is really to recognize the revenue after the 10 days? What we saw as the most important was the fact that we were having such high returns. So estimating them at such a high level seems... But high returns, what's in, what's in the eye for you? If you calculate what I have as returns since three months, it's in 4%. It's a high return for you? We just, from the information provided, it did seem to be significant, especially in such a short period of time.